Just off the Southern California coast lies Channel Islands National Park, one of the least visited national parks in the United States. Most people who visit one of the eight California Channel Islands end up on Catalina. It's not even part of the national park, but it's got all the comforts, a town, restaurants, even a small airport. You can stay the night in a comfy hotel bed or go out and back in just a couple of hours. But this is not Catalina. Santa Barbara Island is the smallest of the eight, just one square mile. And it's one of the hardest to reach. There's no dock, no fresh water, no ferry service, and definitely no cell signal. Today, I'm heading out there as a member of the Explorers Club, an organization whose members have climbed Everest, descended into the deepest ocean trenches, and even orbited Earth. But more people have done those things than visited all of the rugged and remote California Channel Islands. And once we get there, we only have about an hour to climb to the highest point and try to make radio contact with the mainland using a VHF ham radio over 75 miles of open ocean. This is the story of a rare landing and a signal from the edge of the map. So stick around. We're headed to one of California's most remote destinations. Most people on board the boat this morning were headed for Santa Cruz Island, the largest and only island in the national park with regular ferry service. The boats leave from Ventura Harbor, less than an hour north of LA, and it's a quick boat ride out for a solid day hike, lunch on the beach, or if you're feeling ambitious, an overnight at the campground. Santa Cruz is remote, but don't let that fool you. It's still accessible. But 34 of us, artists, scientists, students, and fellow Explorers Club members plan to stay on board the boat at Santa Cruz and head out even further toward one island that's been a bit more shy about visitors. Getting to Santa Barbara Island has been tough since the dock there was damaged by a storm nearly a decade ago, and the Park Service has yet to rebuild it. With a rocky coastline at the foot of a hundred foot tall cliff, there's really only one way on and off the island, and that's assuming the waves and wind cooperate. For most of us, this trip was about experiencing something rare. For our trip leader, Dennis Houghton, it was also about something deeper. Finishing what he'd started. He'd been trying to get people to this island for years. So when I asked him why Santa Barbara Island, his answer was simple. Because it's there and we haven't been able to get out there. Island Packers has not landed on Santa Barbara Island for nine years. But it wasn't just about the logistical challenge. It was also a chance to see the island through a different lens. I'm an expedition artist. And one of my current projects is I'm painting all of the water around the Channel Islands. We have these gems, these absolutely beautiful islands really close to where a lot of us live. So I'm very excited to, to see a new one. So even though we only get an hour and a half here, I'm just so excited to see, you know, the different flora and fauna of this island. It's just such a special trip, like to an island that not a lot of people get to go to. Me, I'd packed a small VHF radio and a lightweight antenna. The goal, climb high enough to contact the mainland by radio, directly across 75 miles of open ocean. Everything had lined up, the weather, the timing, the crew, and for the first time in nearly a decade, our boat's captain was about to land on Santa Barbara Island. Ground is pretty slick, so be aware, but Nick's gonna be there helping you ashore. We went ashore in small groups, six at a time, handed our gear across the rocks and scrambled up a crumbling concrete stairway. My buddy Ken and I had a plan. Since we only had about 90 minutes total before the boat planned to pull up anchor, we were determined to summit the 634 foot tall Signal Peak for the best chance at making radio contact. On the map, it doesn't look far, but once you're out there, there's no shade, no shelter, and it feels a whole lot further. The trail zigzags up the ridge. Every corner looks like it might be the top, until it isn't. Santa Barbara has no reliable cell service or Wi-Fi, so the only way to reach the outside world is by radio or satellite. 
My amateur radio call sign is K6LCM and Ken's is KA6KEN. We planned a simple point-to-point contact with other stations on the mainland. No digital signals or internet-based communications, just simple analog FM radio. We started calling out on the way up using our handheld radios. We were trying to make contact with a few stations back on the mainland. CQ, CQ, CQ from Santa Barbara Island, KA6KEN, CQ. Our first call, nothing but static. Ken tried again, but the signal was weak and noisy, just a ghost of a voice. A third try, and we almost had it. KK6SXA, KA6KEN, Santa Barbara Island. How copy now? Okay, I got the call signs. I got your call sign and my call sign, but whatever you said after that, I didn't catch. Once we reached the peak, we set up for real. Ken built a small directional antenna called a Yagi and aimed it northwest. Well, I'm on my little Yagi here. I'm glad you could hear me. Um, actually, I was yeah. just napping, but I left the radio on uh, just in case. So, nice wake up call, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Ken 6 zzi K6 LCM, also on Santa Barbara Island. Thanks for waking up for us, Warren. Yeah, no problem. K6 LCM, Can 6 ZZI, good to you guys made it out there, that's a lot of fun. When all else fails, ham radio still works. After we made contact with the mainland, I wanted to talk to a few people on the island about the experience of being here at the top of one of the least visited places in the entire state. I don't know what I was expecting, but this is definitely better than I was expecting. It's actually bigger than I thought it would be. And a little steeper than I thought it would be. <laughs> a lot steeper than I thought it would be. It's, it's, it's more beautiful. It really is. It's gorgeous. And it's, um, it's really peaceful and serene. So that's pretty cool. It's um, really, really stunning. Uh, but it, this feeling of isolation is hard to find in this day and age. And, and uh, it's pretty special. We stood at the summit for just a few minutes. The signals had faded away. The skiffs were waiting, and this rare chance was already slipping into memory. As we started down the peak, I powered on my APRS beacon to track our route home. APRS, the Automatic Packet Reporting System, is a digital protocol that lets amateur radio operators transmit their GPS positions, text messages, even weather, using just radio waves. They say take only photos and leave only footprints. It's just that our footprints were digital. In this case, radio breadcrumbs tracing our way off the island. <laughs> All right. After the high impact, high excitement climb, the descent felt almost effortless. We pulled away slowly and headed around the southern tip of the island. We passed one of the island's natural marvels, blowholes carved into the volcanic cliffs. When the waves hit just right, the ocean shot skyward in bursts of white spray. Birds circled above the cliffs and the rocks below were stained white by generations of seabirds calling this place home. And then, whales just offshore. We cut the engines and drifted for a moment as they surfaced near the boat. An expedition doesn't have to be to the Arctic or the Mariana Trench. There are all sorts of places near all of us that with a little research and a bit of effort are just waiting to be uncovered. Santa Barbara Island has kept regular visitors out for years, but we finally made it ashore. Some of us came for inspiration, some came to connect with nature, some came just to say they'd done it. Whatever the reason, for a few minutes, we were all part of something that hopefully more people will someday have a chance to see. If this kind of story resonates with you, real people, lost places, and a bit of tech that ties it all together, it would help me tremendously if you'd like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you've ever tried radio from a remote spot, or you've been to one of the Channel Islands, drop a comment below. I'd love to hear how far you've reached or where you've managed to land. Thanks for coming along with me on this adventure. I hope you'll find your way back here for the next Digital Voyage. Digital Voyage.